Okay, this looks at a static problem that utilizes the idea of forces and force equilibrium. And so it reads the upper leg, this is a knee, go with me on that one. The upper leg muscle, the quadriceps, exert a force of 12, 1,250 newtons which is carried by a tendon over the kneecap, which is sort of like, think of that as sort of a string, like a tension. So it exerts a force of 1,250 newtons and that direction for 55 degrees relative to the horizontal at the kneecap and that same force of 1,250 in this direction at an angle of 75 degrees relative to the kneecap. So it's the same a string, so that force is throughout that same string. So that's how that is shown. All right, what we want to know is what is the direction and magnitude of the force that the kneecap, which is experiencing these, if you imagine this being the kneecap, feeling like it's getting pushed that way um, on the tendon. So what is the direction of the force exerted by the kneecap on the upper leg bone, on the femur? And so Kind of hard to visualize because I can't draw this very well, but let's imagine that we're just going to draw, we're going to draw a free body diagram of this situation and we're going to look at how that kneecap might be exerting a force on that upper leg bone. So let's draw a free body diagram. We have the force of the tendon going up at 1250 newtons. We have the force of that same magnitude sort of going down into the left at 1250 oops, 50 newtons. And we know both of these angles. So this is 55 degrees and this is 75 degrees. And so we want to know what the force is on that kneecap in this equilibrium. Well, we might be able to do a little bit of intuition here. If, if both those forces are pushing to the left, we know that there's going to be a horizontal component. The force of the knee is going to have to be to the right. Then the second piece is, well, is it the vertical component of the knee up or down? We might suspect, since this has a larger vertical component than this one, that the force of the knee vertical is going to be in the upward direction. Now, why do I break those up? Well, I don't know the angle, the force on that kneecap, and so as a result, I have to make a guess and I can break it up into horizontal and vertical components. I do that because then I can put them together to get the angle. So we're going to look at them separately and then we'll put it back together to get the full magnitude of the force and the angle at which it's acting. Now, am I 100% sure it's to the right and up? Not 100%. I think it's a pretty good guess in this case, but not 100%. But that's okay because it's the physics will tell me if I get it wrong it's going to give me the opposite direction in which case I will know it'll give me a negative which tells me I chose wrong I chose in the opposite direction all right so we have four forces we're going to look at the horizontal and vertical components of those forces I will label them one two three and four All right, force number one, that is, this is my angle 75 degrees. I'm pointing to the left. If I use this angle 75, I need to make that force negative. So we have 1250 times the cosine of 75. It's also pointing down. So the vertical component is minus 1250 times the sine of 75. All right, force number two. Well, there's only a horizontal component of the knee in this in force number two, and I've defined it as pointing to the right. No vertical component. Force number three is my vertical component of the knee, so that is in the vertical direction. Nothing horizontal, and I've des designated it as up. And then force number four again is to the left, so that'll be a minus. 1250 times the cosine of 55. Again, since I'm not using the coordinate system of the positive x axis to reference my angles, I have to pay attention to that direction. And it's also pointing up, so that'll be a positive 1250, not times the cosine, times the sine of 55. All right, so I then sum the forces horizontal are going to equal zero if this is in a stationary state. 
and the sum of the vertical forces will also equal zero. So sum these up, I end up with negative 1250 times the cosine of 75 is minus 323.5 minus, or sorry, plus the force of the knee horizontal minus 1250 times the cosine of 55 is 716.97. That is going to equal zero. So I find that my horizontal component of the knee is equal to 1040.5 newtons. Right? Vertically, I have minus 1250 times the sine of 75. That's minus 1207.4 plus the force of the knee vertical, plus, I'm gonna have to go down to this bottom, 1023.9, and that is equal to zero. So 1250 times the sine of 55 is 1023.9. And the force of the knee vertical then is 183.47 newtons. So I have my horizontal and vertical components. I can get the magnitude of the force of that knee as the square root of the sum of these squares. So 1040.5 squared plus 183.47 squared. And if I take the square root of that, I get a magnitude of 1056.5 newtons. And then, of course, I also need to find the angle. We know that the angle is equal to the inverse tangent, my y component, 183.47, over my x component of 1040.5, and that gives me an angle of 10 degrees. So I, using my static equilibrium idea. In this case, I only had to look at the net force acting on this muscle. I get a magnitude of 1056 at an angle of 10 degrees. All right, so static equilibrium force analysis. Good job.